morning. Welcome to worship on this festival of Pentecost. When we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to the disciples and the sending out of the church into the world. We're glad that you are tuning in with us today. A couple of announcements. A reminder that we have a memorial service for Ruth Lebrecht on Sunday, June 18th. I'm sorry, Saturday, June 18th here at St. James. And also we invite you to be in prayer this week as our Indiana Kentucky Synod is meeting in assembly. As part of the agenda this year, it is uh, the time to elect a bishop. Our current bishop, William Guffian, is uh, standing for re-election, but uh, there may be others who, uh, whose names are lifted up. So we do ask you to pray for our assembly uh, in this gathering. We continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. offers life to all the peoples of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, 
In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read select verses from Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you and give them their food in due season. You give it to them and they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide their, your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, O Lord. Rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from the eighth chapter of Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Greetings, dear siblings in Christ. I'm Pastor Heather Apel, Assistant to the Bishop for Leadership in the Indiana-Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. On this Pentecost Sunday, when we remember how the Holy Spirit came with a mighty rushing wind, may you feel the Spirit's presence whenever and wherever you worship this weekend. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, I think back to the time when I was young and learning the Bible stories. And of course, one of the first stories that you'll find in every children's Bible is that of Adam and Eve. And I can recall that it made me wonder why everyone in the world didn't look the same if we all descended from these first two people. Of course, if we keep reading, we later heard the story of Noah and his family, who then repopulated the earth after the flood. But even then, my childhood brain wondered where all the beautiful diversity of God's people came from, even if we all came from this one family. Well, the story of the Tower of Babel, which was the alternative first reading today, gives some explanation to the many peoples and languages that we find, not only in the scriptures to follow, but in our world today. Although this alternative text would then replace the first reading, and you'd hear Acts 2 read later, I found it helpful to actually consider these two texts alongside one another in light of the gospel lesson for today, as we think about the celebration of Pentecost this weekend and what's happening in our world today. If we look at the Tower of Babel story, it might be easy for us to see this as an illustration of divine judgment upon the people of the earth. This certainly would be a natural understanding as we hear of the people's misguided attempts to create a tower so high that it would reach the heavens and was motivated by their need to make a name for themselves. One might then hear this story as punishment for the pride and status that humanity sought through their actions of building this grand tower. However, there is another way to look at the story. What if we look at this story as a description of God's desire that there be diversity and uniqueness among creation and not as penalty for people's actions? Because if we look closer at the text, we see that it was the people who were concerned with what might happen if they were scattered over the face of the earth. They were already one group of people with one language, and it seemed like they wanted things to stay that way, which was why they wanted to build this tower and remain unified together. Well, God sees this oneness among the people and realizes that this was not the plan for creation. Just think about the number of different animals and plants that had been created by God. Why would God not want this same diversity among humans? Do we really think that God wanted all of us to be exactly the same when there is such joy and magnificence in being unique and different? If we remember, God had also given the role of caretaker of creation to the people. So if they were content to stay in one place and remain in their towered city, what would happen to their job of caring for the whole earth? Rather than see this story as punishment for humanity's isolation, self-preservation, and pride, we can think of it as an explanation for the vast variety of peoples and languages in our world today as God spread God's people into the far corners of the earth to help them accomplish the very task that they were first given to do. 
which is what then brings us to the story from Acts 2, a passage that we hear every year at Pentecost. Over the years, there have been scholars who juxtapose the Tower of Babel story with the Holy Spirit's visit on Pentecost, as if this New Testament story somehow reverses the issue that was caused among the people in the Old Testament lesson. However, it's important for us to note that when the Holy Spirit rested upon the disciples, it does not say that they all spoke the same language, as if to bring the people back to a time before the Tower of Babel. Verse 6 makes it clear that the crowds who were gathered there from places near and far each heard the disciples speaking in their own native language. There is no single language spoken at Pentecost. So instead of thinking about this event as a correction for the earlier self-preserving action of those who tried to build the tower, this story only further confirms that God desires and celebrates the diversity among God's people. On this day when we celebrate the church's birthday, I think it's quite fitting that our texts point toward the diversity of God's people, while at the same time we find our unity in Christ. It's one of those good Lutheran concepts of both and. We are both united in Christ and we have our diversity as a gift from God. Jesus' words to his followers in our gospel lesson as he was preparing to leave them are applicable not only in the first century Jerusalem, but also in our world today. Jesus said that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. As a refresher, those commandments can basically be boiled down to two things. Love God, love neighbor. However, Jesus might have known that even these two instructions would be pretty hard for us to keep, since he went on to let his disciples know that after he was gone, they wouldn't be left abandoned. The Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth would be sent with to them, to be with them forever, and to teach and remind them of all that Jesus had taught. That same Holy Spirit promised by Jesus, which showed up on Pentecost, is still with us now, reminding us of Jesus' teachings and commandment to love God and to love our neighbor. That love applies even when our neighbor doesn't look like us, or speak the same language, or even believe the same thing about God as we do. In a world that has become so divisive, whether it is regarding gun control, vaccinations, immigration policies, or what should or shouldn't be taught in our public schools, the church can be a witness of how we remain united under the crucified and risen Jesus, while still allowing for the great diversity that God has created among God's people. The Bible passages that we have heard on this Pentecost day remind us that what brings us together as God's people is not our political party affiliation or even our church denomination. The community of God's people is much bigger than a tower that sought to hold all of the people of the earth together. Since we have been called to not only tend and care for all of creation, but to go and spread the good news to the far ends of the earth. But what kind of witness do we show when we fail to love our neighbor? Our calling as Jesus' disciples is not always an easy task. There will be moments when we try, fail, and try again, and sometimes fail again. But we do have that promised Holy Spirit that walks with us as we seek to proclaim the good news of what God has done through our own words and actions. 
it might have been less complicated in this world if God hadn't scattered the peoples across the face of the earth and confused their language. However, we would have missed out on the diversity of God's creation and the beauty that this brings to our world and communities today. May we celebrate both the oneness of the church and the uniqueness of all God's children within it. Thanks be to God.
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors, and by your spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the Advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering especially Francis, Kathy, and those we name in our hearts. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all the lay leaders, pastors, deacons, and our bishop of the Indiana Kentucky Synod as they meet in assembly this week that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust that wherever two are gathered or more, trust that this gift is for you.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.